Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Uh, today you see me with some headphones on because we're doing double duty. We are uh, coming to you live from our radio broadcast, The Balance of Life, and we are also coming to you live via our YouTube page. I am so excited about what is taking place in this season and in each and every one of your lives. And, and let me let me say this right here, that on last night, uh, we did do Bible study live. And uh, we were talking about faith. And, and so I have not rested very well because the Holy Spirit has yet continued to uh, give me some downloads and some revelation of his word. And, and I wanted to continue that. Uh, with both of our platforms here and and so let me get some preliminaries out of the way before we go any farther we love to stay connected with you uh, you can connect with us via social media uh, you can also uh, log on to our website at www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com uh, there's a host of information there the school of ministry and mentoring programs our partners in prayer. We absolutely love you. Uh, Purpose to Pray with Prophetess Yolanda. Um, I'm sorry. Purpose to Pray with Prophetess Melissa Kelly. You'll overcome ministries with Prophetess uh, Yolanda Lee George and uh, women with a made up mind. Pastor Valerie Wilson of Charity Light House of Faith. Also on our website, you will find uh, our publishing division and our ministry schedule and uh, the life applications that we send to our students. And so uh, I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, I want to get into this word because um, we're, we're talking about faith and we know that we are in a season dealing with our faith. But uh, at, on last night, as, as we begin to tap in, uh, the the identity when when we activate our faith when we move towards God uh, what God has said to us then then our identity is then brought to life and and so that right there just continued to manifest and, and get sweeter and sweeter in my spirit and so uh, I begin to take a look at some things I begin to take a look at image and uh, when I look at the definition of image Image means uh, an image is a picture or other representation of a person or thing. And when we get over to the scripture, Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse, and this is where uh, the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are uh, in the process of that the heavens and the earth have been created. Uh, light has been brought on the scene and day and night has been given a purpose and identity, a function. And uh, the, the, the firmament, the dry land, fish and birds and animals. And now it comes to you and I, the image. In Genesis, the first chapter in the 26th verse says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after the likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now before we go any further, we're going to have a moment of prayer uh, because I, I want this word, uh, this revelation, I want it to Take hold and, and, and get into your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment and this time. We relinquish ourselves unto you, Lord God, that you may increase and that we may decrease. Open up the heart, mind, and the spirit to receive your word, to accept it, Lord God, and then to apply it to our lives. Oh God, that you may have all of the glory and that all of the honor may return back to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so as I was uh, looking at this, uh, this dropped into my spirit. What was spoken about you was spoken from the very beginning from heavenly places. 
it was spoken about you from heaven. It just has to manifest itself on earth. Jeremiah 1 and 5. I'm going to line this up. And uh, I was supposed to have some relaxation time before coming on the air today. But how many of you know that when your spirit is quickened and God wants to say something to you, uh, you get up and you move and you take notes and you allow God to be God in your life. Jeremiah, the first chapter, and at the fifth verse, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now, when we look back at Genesis, the first chapter, and the 26th verse, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. Now let's go back to Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And so from heavenly places, from the heavens, from the kingdom, it was already spoken. Your life was already spoken. Your being, your purpose, your destiny was already spoken from heaven. From the beginning, you were already spoken. What God wants to do in your life was spoken from the beginning, created in the image of them. He said, let us create man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Here he tells Jeremiah, and that same word applies to us today. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. From the beginning, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew all about you. How can he say that? Because he created us from the beginning. He can say, I knew you before I formed you in the belly. I knew thee. He can say that because he, he said in Genesis 1:26, and God said, let us make man in our image. He spoke you from heaven. He was speaking about you from heaven. And so as I was studying this, it says, during the process of establishing uh, what was to be on the earth, man was created, spoken of, to exist in the image of the Trinity, but from a heavenly place, from the kingdom. We were spoken of before our existence from heaven within a kingdom position to be in the image of God. Once again, and what is image? Image means to represent. It means to represent a person or thing. And so here on earth, we are supposed to represent our Father which is in heaven. Now, how am I supposed to represent him if I don't know him? It's a good question. How am I supposed to represent him? How, how, what, what, what do I know about him? But he spoke of me from heavenly places. He didn't, oh God, he didn't speak of me from an earthly realm. He spoke of me from heavenly places, from the kingdom, that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. You, you, your, your kingdom being, your, your heavenly, your, you're spoken of from the heavens. It says what was spoken from heaven is expected to show up. It is supposed to appear and to function here on earth. So what's going on in the heavens? What's going on in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God, that I should do? here on earth what is it that i'm supposed to be doing here on earth i'm supposed to be representing the love and the character of god on earth if i don't know how to represent him here on earth i can't i can't get to to heaven where he is i i, I i'm supposed to represent him here his image from heaven flows through me here on earth 
what he told Jeremiah. He says, "Be before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee." And so here's something that's that's so profound. Uh, your life, the beginning of your life, and what he ordained you to be, was done at the beginning. It, it, it did not happen and transpire once you once you were born and once you were uh, 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 conceived in your mother's womb and, and once you came forth through the birth canal, that's not when your life began. Mm. No, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And so you are from heavenly places. We are from heavenly places. That is where he spoke us into existence. He spoke it. He said, you know what? Uh, in 1972, I need my prophet. I need my elder. I need my pastor. I, I need my woman of God. I need her on the earth. I, I have a, a set time for her to appear on the earth. And during the course of her lifetime, my God, there are some things that I want her to do. She's going to experience some things. And she's, she's, she's going to go through some things. But I spoke her existence from heaven. And I had an appointed time when I would release her upon the earth. Oh God, and but I have her destiny, I have her end already set. This is what I called her to be. I set her identity from heaven. Oh my God, your identity was set from heaven. It was set from heaven. He says it right here when he's talking about uh, a Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thy camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That's before he hit his mother's womb. To back it up, we have to go back to Genesis. We have to go back to the foundation while he was creating, while he was orchestrating. And he said, let us, let us, not, not him by himself. Because he wasn't in operation by himself. It was the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they operated in faith. And God said, let us make man in our image. What does this mean? It means here that uh, where we read the creation of human beings gives more specific details about our creation and about our environment. These two accounts are complementary and teach several things. Both men and women are special creation of God, not the product of evolution. Listen, you are not a mistake. You were created and released upon the earth for a reason. You were created in the image of the Most High, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you were released, there was something spoken over you upon your release. While he was thinking about releasing you, while he was creating you in his image, he had a purpose designed in your life for you to walk in and for you to be. And then one day, and that's your birthday, you, you, you guess what? You're, the day of, oh my God, you have to go back to the day of conception. The day of conception, oh, he released a plan within your mother's womb. You were a plan meant to be released from your mother's womb. And you made your entrance upon the earth from heavenly places. We come from heavenly places, from kingdom. And once we learn of and accept the image that we're supposed to represent, then we can fulfill the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. I'm supposed to act. I'm supposed to be. My image is supposed to represent the kingdom because that's where my life was orchestrated from. My life was orchestrated from the kingdom of God. Your life was orchestrated from the kingdom of God, from heavenly places. You were created in the image of the Most High. He just simply used our parents as vessels, as, 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 as a holding place until he was ready for us to make our, our entrance. Oh my God, that's absolutely good. It's his will. 
that we be mankind, that we operate on the earth with the intended purpose of representing heaven. His intention for us is that we represent heaven, but along the way we have to learn what heaven is, what kingdom is all about. We are supposed to demonstrate his love. We serve a God who creates and who produces good. Representation. What is your identity? You have to, you have to know and, and become one with who he created you to be. You have an identity. It's not lazy. It's, it's not the demonic deception that wants to penetrate your thoughts. And it's not the negative things that was said about you. It's not those things. You were created in the image of the Most High. Our God is sovereign. He is loving. He is giving. He is full of mercy and of kindness. Your identity you were identified before you were released in your mother's womb. Your identity is the mantle placed upon your life. The spiritual gifts that have been released in your life that you operate in. If you were one who were called uh, with one of the ascension gifts, also known as the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, teachers. That is your identity. Your ide Oh my God, your identity also is a function. Your identity uh, uh, represents and tells of your function. Oh my God. And so if you are called into one of those ministry giftings, one of the ascension gifts, it is a function. It is not a title. Oh my God, your identity is a function. It works. God has an identity. The description of his identity is sovereign God. It, it, it is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. It is Jehovah Nisi. It is the God who healeth thee. It is the I am that I am. It is the Lord, his identity, his characteristics. Identity. What is your identity? Do you know who you are? Do you know who he called you to be? Do you know? I encourage you to take the time. Get into his presence. Say, go, go back to Jared, go, go back to Genesis, the first chapter in the 26th verse. You have to speak this word over yourself. You have to tell yourself this when the enemy comes in and he wants to discourage you and, and he wants to uh he wants to tell you that you you're something negative and there's nothing good in you. Let me tell you something. I was created in the image of the most high. I might have took, taken on some 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 false pretense. I, I might have taken on a false image, but my original identity, my original image came from heaven. I may have taken on the similitude of others. I might have taken on the environment around me. But I was created in the image of the Most High. My identity was established from heaven. It was spoken from the beginning who I was destined and created to be. And that does not just apply to me, that, that, but that applies to each and every one of you. You were created in the image of the Most High. Yes, along our journey, things attach itself to us. Spirits that are not like God. They attach themselves to us. When you get begin to say, I want to see myself as God sees me. I want to see myself as, as he created me to be in his image. And you begin to line up what you say and think about yourself. Begin to line that up with what God said about you from the scripture. About what he spoke over your life before you were created it was spoken from the beginning. You were created in the image of the Most High. He said, let us 
let us, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, let me make them in the image of their ancestors, of their physical bloodline. That's not what he said. He said, let us make man in our image. You might resemble your birth parents, but your image, your identity came from heaven. Kingdom mindset. Kingdom mindset. When he said these words over uh, Jeremiah, before I formed thee, I ordained thee. Before Jeremiah was born, God had already determined that he would be a prophet. Before you were born, your identity was already set. What you were destined to be was already set in place. You know, when you get a blank canvas and you get some paint, you already have in your mind what you want to paint. You already know what the end result is going to be. You just have to go ahead and get that paint and dip it into that paintbrush and begin to outline and sketch on that blank canvas. But the image was set in your mind from the beginning before you begin to work. The image, the vision, it showed up. And so what showed up? In your mind what showed up in the vision guess what you're going to bring it to life you're going to allow it to appear that's what God was doing when he said let us make man in our image he set a time for you to appear and the fullness of you all oh, the fullness of you will blossom throughout time see they, they they let me go back to genesis because see something had to take place oh god this is this is good something took place upon that decision there were some things put into place when it came to man he did some things He shaped man from dust and he formed him. Let's go over to Genesis, the seventh verse, chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So first he spoke it. A decision was made. And then the process was done. It, it, he spoke it. In Genesis 126. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust. But when he spoke about it. It was from heaven. And he took man, he formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. And man became a living soul. So it wasn't done all at one time. There were stages to life. But as we stay in the presence of God, as we submit ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. And see, we, we really have to get an understanding of that, of presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him. I can only be holy and acceptable unto him as I find out what is deemed as holy from the kingdom. Not based off my environment, mm -mm. but from heavenly places. Identity. You were created, we were created with an identity from the beginning. Now then we have to live up to that identity. Because once again, when we're looking at the word 
image. And let's go ahead and let's 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 look up identity. Identity. What does identity mean? What makes up the identity? The mind from all that he or she experiences growing up. But before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He already had a plan for you, a purpose for you. Jeremiah's purpose was to be a prophet unto the nations. He has a purpose and a plan for you too. Also, it says here, the word identity is defined as a set of personal and behavioral characteristics which divine, define an individual as a member of a certain group. Okay. So your identity stems from heavenly places. And God said, let us make man in our image. The definition of identity is defined as a set of personal and behavioral characteristics which define an individual or as a member of a certain group. Let us make man in our image. My identity is based off of the behavioral characteristics from which I was created from. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was spoke from heaven. I was created in his image. And so my identity will represent who created me. God created us in his image. The environment will change us. The environment will try to alter what was created. If you take a clean uh, vase if, and, and, and you put it outside, the weather is going to alter the appearance. Rain and snow, if a mud puddle hits it, dirt, dust, it's going to alter the original appearance. It does not alter the identity, oh my God, but it alters the appearance. But the identity of the object has not been altered. And if you were to take that vase that has dirt and grime and dust on it and wash it off, you will find that the identity, the purpose of that vase is still relevant. It's still purposeful. You just remove what the environment attached to it. And so through cleansing, through getting into the presence of the Lord, the things from the environment that have attached itself to you can be removed. Through fasting, through prayer, through casting down high imaginations and those things that want to exalt itself against the power and the authority of the Most High God. Your environment does not have the, same, the, 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 the last say-so concerning your life. For what you were created for, your identity, it is still there. It has not vanished. It has not gone away. You were created in the image of the Most High. What God deemed for you to do on earth, as you would do in heaven, guess what? My God, it's still relevant today. Take that word, Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse, Genesis, the second chapter, and the seventh verse, Jeremiah 1 and 8. Take that word, apply it to your life. You were created from the beginning. Your destiny was created from the beginning. Your identity was created from the beginning, not your environment. We love you here at the Balance of Life. It's always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. You know our motto, stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. If you would like to...